think they're plumb crazy to do away with the Pony Express. Well, so do I, but they claim this newfangled telegraph will be a lot faster. Won't work. You mark my words. I've never heard of sending messages over a piece of wire. <laughs> what are you going to do now, Jim? Punch cows again, I reckon. Seem pretty tame after Pony Express riding. Yeah. I guess I'll hunt buffalo. They say there's pretty good money in hides. What's Johnny Blair going to do? I don't know, but he won't starve. He's been saving his nickels. He's due here in 10 seconds. He'll be here in... There he comes yeah. now. Here you are, Ed. Right on time, Blair, as usual. Wouldn't want to be late on my last run, Mr. Dodge. Sorry to see it end. So am I. Men, when that mail reaches Sacramento, it means the end of the Pony Express. You've established a record in carrying the mails that will go down in history. In appreciation of your loyalty, the company is giving each of you a gift. Two Pony Express horses, toughest and fastest in the country. Hey, thanks, boss. Just go down to the corrals and pick out the ones you want. And the best of luck to you, boys. Thanks. Thank oh, thanks, Mr. Dodge. Two thoroughbreds each. Well, that's a real gift. Yeah, let's go up and pick them out. What are you going to do with your horses? Sell them. Oh, no, you're not. I got a better idea. We're going to start a stage line. A stage line? Sure, there's plenty of money in it. But we haven't got any stagecoach. Oh, we'll get one. Suits me, partner. And we'll pick out four good stagecoach horses. We'll head for Buchanan City. We may be able to get a stage there. Well, there she is, Buchanan City. Hope that fellow Drake's got a stage go to sell us. Oh, with a stage line the size of his, he ought to have plenty of old ones he'd be glad to get rid of. We'll soon find out. Well, here we are. Looking for Cal Drake. That's me. Come in. What can I do for you? We want to buy a stagecoach, Mr. Drake. We figured you might have an old one you'd sell us cheap. Stagecoach? What are you going to do with it? Start a stage line. Where are you going to run it? We hadn't figured that out yet. You mean you haven't got a franchise? Franchise? You have to have one of those to start a stage line? Where well, had you boys are settling you at the game. Takes a lot of money. You've got to go through a lot of red tape to start a stage line. How much money are you figuring on putting into it? Oh, about a thousand dollars. Maybe I can help you boys out. See all those lines? Those are all my stage routes. I kind of bit off a little more than I could chew, and I've been neglecting the Crescent City line lately. I'll sell it to you cheap. Two ambitious fellows ought to make a good thing out of it. Well, how much do you want for it? Three thousand dollars. A thousand dollars right now, and the balance in two payments. Sixty nine days. You can pay it easy out of the profits, and you'll find a stagecoach in Crescent City that goes with it. Well, uh, how far is this Crescent City? Thirty five miles north of here. Oh, well, we'll think it over and let you know later. Fine. Here's an atlas. It'll give you a little idea about the town. Here it is. Crescent City. 
Population 3,500. Climate healthful, water supply excellent, school and church. What do you say? Don't you think we'd better go up and look it over first? What for? All those towns are alike. All right. We'll take it, Mr. Drake. Fine, fine. You boys got a great thing in this. And I'm going to get a lot of pleasure out of watching you make it pay. Crescent City, home of the Adams and Blair stage line. Mail, passengers, and freight carried from coast to coast. Let's start advertising right now. Get a crowd together and make them a speech. People don't make much noise. Well, well, maybe they're out on a picnic. Or just out. Wait, I hear someone. I could arrest you for that. But as mayor, I welcome you to Crescent City. As president of the council, I gave myself the afternoon off. I am Rocky Bryan. Well, does anyone else live here besides you and the pigs? Huh? Well, yeah, yes. Uh, Doc, Doc Forsythe lives over there near the hotel. That makes two customers for our stage line. Yeah. Are you going to run the Crescent City stage, stranger? Well, we bought it. Yippee! Hey, Doc, here's some good news for you. These fellows have taken over the Crescent City stage line. We're the suckers who bought it, all right. Well, I'm sorry to hear that. I'm William Forsythe. My name is Blair. This is Larry Adams. Someone sold it to you under false pretenses, I suppose. Human nature's like that, Mr. Blair. Well, you boys must be hungry. I'll prepare a bite for you. Drake told us we'd find a stagecoach here. You know where it is? Yes, yeah, yes. Yeah. Come, come along. I'll, I'll show you. You know, even after the gold petered out, this has been a good town. If Doc and Cal Drake hadn't had to fall them out. What do you mean? Well, they was partners, but Doc didn't like the crooked deals Drake was pulling, so Drake just squeezed the Doc out and moved all his stuff to Buchanan City. Looks like he did a good job. Sure did. Drake's crooked as a snake. Well, there it is.
Well, it isn't much to look at. Well, you still carry passengers. We can get them. You could get them all right if, if you could land that mail contract. Mail contract? Yes. Yeah. Being postmaster of this here city, I'm in on the mold. Look at that. Sounds so bad after all. I smell something funny. So do I. Look out, it's a skunk. That was a close one. It sure was. Where can I get a rag and some water? Did he get you? No, we gotta clean that coach up. Our franchise calls for a round trip to Buchanan twice a week. We gotta get started. I'll fix you right up. There's a record for you. We doubled our population in one day. There ain't many cities can do that. Coming into town with his stagecoach. Empty. Well, how did you think it would be? Be ready in case he tries to start anything. We'll take care of him. I'll have the boys give him a welcome. Don't forget, boys. Let's give him a great send off. the ghost town. Crescent City's a swell place to die. <laughs> <laughs> well, I didn't know school let out so early. Well, Blair, how's it going? It's fine. It'll be a lot better after I land that mail contract. I want to enter my stagecoach in that mail race. Good. I was beginning to think that there wouldn't be anybody in it but Drake. Well, it seems to me there'd be plenty of coaches in there for $25,000. That's what I figured. But something is scaring them out. Come on inside and sign up. Sit up 
in front? Sure, you won't be so crowded. Hey, Blair, I got a passenger for you. I charge half fare for jackasses. Come on, bring your friends. You can run, walk, or ride a horse. This is the only stagecoach. You really want to go? Of course. Funny place, miss. Oh, I know all about it. My father owns the town. Dr. Forsythe? Oh, it's not like any town you've ever Dad's seen. I've written me lots about it. It's quaint hotels, it's patients, the mayor and the sheriff, and all the big men. He wrote you all that? Yes, and, and all about the lovely stores. Oh, there's plenty of stores. <laughs> and the funny storekeepers. I can hardly wait to go shopping. Say, does your dad know you're coming? Oh, no. I want to surprise him. Oh. You're going to be disappointed if you expect... Oh, I'm not expecting to see New York or Paris. Well, what do you got there? Captured me a laundry. They was run out of mud springs for using perfume soap in the miners' shirts. <laughs> Here comes the stage. John's got a fast. going on about? She had a pretty hard jolt. Well, that stagecoach would jolt anybody. Let's leave at once, Dad. You don't belong here. I can't do that. Everything I have is here. Anyone here know how to treat a sick horse? I'm a horse doctor, and president of the Board of Health, too. There's a big old settler's time I cure that horse. <laughs> Mr. 
officer. Your horse has got the box, some epizootic, and a touch of glanders. You ain't going to drive another mile. But I've got to move on. My daughter's got the fever. You're in luck, stranger. we got the best doctor in the West. Uh, hey, Dr. Forsythe. I'd like to speak to you about your father. Yes? He put everything he had into this town. When he lost it, he lost confidence in himself. Of course he did, in this awful place. He'll be all right when he's back east among friends. No, he'd feel worse to go back a failure. If you had the right spirits, you'd stay here and help him. I don't think I need your advice. The child needs a rest. You've been traveling a long way. Yes. We're looking for a place to settle. Bring her to my office. I'll see what I can do for her. Thanks, Doctor. You can't beat this town. We've got fresh eggs, a fine laundry, stage line, and a brand new pretty school teacher. I remember, Larry. Only allow seven passengers in the coach at one time. Our motto is comfort without crowding. Oh, yes, sir. I'll ride on a piece with you. All right, boys. Get out of here. Come on, old man. Morning, Miss Barbara. Oh, Doc, you are looking younger every day. I've been feeling much happier ever since Barbara arrived. Let's be getting back, Dad. I promised to give the children a reading lesson. Oh, uh, we saw a work crew on the road early this morning. They're putting up that new telegraph line. Telegraph line? I want to talk to those fellas. I'll see you later. Bye, John. John's a fine lad, isn't he? Too bossy to suit me. It takes bossy men to succeed out here. Hey! Don't drink that water! Crazy? I had to keep him from drinking that water. It's poison. Somebody must have knocked this sign over. Poison? Yes, deadly. Then that's what ails my men. And I thought it was the heat. I'll get a doctor. going to be all right. We've got to thank you for saving our lives. Dr. Forsythe deserves the credit for that. If I can ever do anything for you, just call on me. If you really mean that, how about running your wires through Crescent City? Would it help you if I did? It sure would, can you? If it doesn't cost too much time or money, why, let's look at my map. Going through Crescent City, I'd have to cut out Buchanan. Well, why not? Let's see. The distance would be the same. But I wouldn't be able to get many supplies in Crescent City. How many men do you need? At least 50. Well, if I get you the men and the supplies, does Crescent City get the telegraph? Yes. It's a deal. I'll see you later, Doc. Oh, yeah. Man, 
Then the telegraph company needs workers. The first 50 of you to reach Crescent City will get a job at $10 a day and keep. What's all the excitement about? They run the telegraph to Crescent City. Blair and Adams are hiring men to work there. What? That beats Pan and two bucks worth of gold a day. Now I'm heading for Crescent City. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's all to go. Well, that's our first step. The telegraph will bring some people. And when we get that mail contract, we'll put Crescent City on the map again. Right. That's for me, boys. Come on, in. We're heading for Crescent City. Come on. $10 a day. You think of that, boys? And they're hey, all going wait a minute. Everyone is going over for us. Come on, get a gate off. You can, that. Chuck you a note. Who's that? Gonna let him get away with it? No. Go to Crescent City, Mr. Drake. Helpful climate. Population 3,500. No thanks. I'd like to see you in my office, Mr. Blair. I got to hand it to you, Blair. You're smart. I sold you a lemon and you made an orange out of it. I didn't call you and you had a fat you on the back. But I got a job that requires nerve and brains, and I think you're the man to fit the bill. What is it? I got a shipment of gold going for Sacramento. And I want you to drive it through for me on my stage. Why me? What's the matter with your driver? The amount I'm sending might be too tempting to my men. I'd rather trust you than them. There'll be a thousand dollar payment due on your stage line, which I will cancel when you bring me a receipt for the gold. I'll take it through. Good. And I'll give you an armed escort. Is that necessary? You'll be carrying a fortune. The men ready? Larry. You know, Cherokee, there's never been a holdup on my stage line. There's got to be a first time for everything. It's dangerous for the driver, ain't it? The drivers always do seem to get hurt. I wouldn't do it, John. He's got some trick up his sleeve. I know it, Larry. We need that thousand dollars to pay on our franchise. So we can enter that mail race. Then I'd better go with you. No, you gotta drive this stage back to Crescent City. I'll be all right. Well, keep your eyes open. One of the boys are escorting Blair to Sacramento. You take care of his partner. He'll be starting back to Crescent City. Boys, 
Boys, we're getting near the pass. Well, what about it? Well, hadn't you fellas better ride ahead and find out if it's clear? Yeah, sure. Double-crossing crook. Well, it certainly looks like old times in Crescent City. And it's all due to John's efforts. How long will it last, Dad? Oh, probably a month or more. After that, John Blair will have to work another miracle. Well, why not? If he can win the race for the mail contract, we'll get a post office. And then Crescent City will be a beehive once again. If he wins. He'll win. You can bank on that. Every room in the hotel's full. Say, isn't this quite a come down from Mayor and Sherry? Maybe. The boys are kind of ashamed to tip the mayor. I'm doing all right now. <laughs> oh, here comes the here comes the stage. Where's Larry? He ought to be driving. We couldn't see who fired the shot. But whoever it was, he was waiting there to do that job. They're out. Going or coming? No, I didn't. And I'm still alive. Why do you expect me to pay you $1,000 for the trip? When I lose money on the passengers and freight you didn't pick up. Did you want that gold delivered or didn't you? Of course. And write me out a receipt for the second payment on that Crescent City franchise. Don't reach for anything but your pen. Remember, you don't own that stage line yet. We'll talk about that after the government mail race. John, please sit down. Did Larry say who shot him? He didn't see them. They fired from the bushes. How is he, Doc? Is he going to live? The bullet lodged near his spine. Only a very delicate operation could save his life. Well, you're a doctor. Why, I wouldn't dare. I haven't operated in years. I've lost confidence. I'd be afraid Listen, that I... Doc. Larry means more to me than anyone else in the world. Do something for him, will you? Please, Dad. We have confidence in you. Haven't we, John? All the confidence in the world.
Larry will live. Oh, thanks, Doc. box tomorrow, Drake? Sure thing. This race means too much to me. If you win? Nothing's going to keep me from it. Hi, John. Hello, Rocky. As treasurer of Crescent City, I'm betting the city funds on you, John. The whole ten dollars and sixty cents. <laughs> Where's your coach? It's down at the livery stable. I'm going down there now. Come on. Good. are okay. Well, the coach is hardly scorched. You suppose Drake or his men pulled this cheap trick? I'm sure of it. Well, whoever it was, you got one of them anyhow. You're under arrest. What for? For shooting a man. Oh, it was in self-defense. He tried to burn Blair's coach. That can be explained to the judge. This warrant calls for your arrest. Who swore out the warrant? Cal Drake. Can't you see this is a trick to try and keep me out of that mail race? I'm sorry, but I've got to do my duty. Take care of those horses, Green, and stand guard over this coach. I'll get you out of this, John! Five minutes to go, and Blair is safe in jail. <laughs> this isn't a race, it's an excursion. Well, what'd you do, Doc? Get those horses over to the starting line. They've got to be there by 9 o'clock. Good as done, Doc. It's time to start this race. There's a minute left. Turkey, cut across to the relay station and tell them to have those fresh horses ready, just in case. Right, Blair. But I. There's an order for John's release on bail signed by the Justice of the Peace. Hmm. $500 bail, eh? Business must be good in Crescent City.
stay in the race long. got loose somehow, and it's up to you to stop him. Good luck, John. Thanks, Barbara. All right. I'll be right inside. If you need any help, you wake me up. He's obstinate and bossy and bullheaded and domineering. He is not.
They're coming a mile away, and Drake is leading. Come on, come on. And we must never forget, my friends, how much we owe to John Blair. That's right. I don't know how I can ever repay you, John. I do. Hey, look! Oh. <laughs>